Today I'm going to show you how to use a miter box. This is just your typical $20 miter box. It comes with the saw. Not only am I going to show you how to use this, I'm going to show you some tips and some tricks and I'm going to show you how to cut a board in this miter box that is far too tall for this miter box. There is a way to do this and I'm going to show you how. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deerdorf and this is Detroit DIY. Let's cut some miters. I've placed some links in the description of this video to some of the tools that we'll be using today. If you use any of those links, it does not cost you any extra. However, I do get a small percentage. Becky sent me an email and asked me to make this video. And to make this video, not only show you how to use the miter box, but her trim is six inches tall. She does not have a miter saw, doesn't want to buy a miter saw. She's just trying to trim out her bathroom. There is a way to cut this tall trim in here and we're going to get to that in a few minutes. Hold tight Becky, we're going to get there. If you are stumped on any of your projects, the whole reason I created this YouTube channel was to help people. So please do the same as Becky, send me an email. My email address is DetroitDIYVideos at gmail.com. I'm going to put that right down below where you can see it. Any questions at all, any things that you're stumped on or having trouble getting around, I will gladly do everything I can to help you get your project completed and look professional. First, let's just go over the miter box real quick. We have a couple of cam locks that are supplied with the miter box. The cam locks will go in these holes, whichever one is appropriate, and allow you to turn them and lock your workpiece into place. We'll, we'll demonstrate that here shortly. Also, the miter box needs to be secure, and they've given us three ways to do that. They've put these clamping wings on here, on each side, so you can use clamps. They've put these little tabs on here that fold out so that you can set it up against the edge of your workbench to hold it in place that way and they have also put a couple of areas here for you to put some screws in to secure it to your workbench with screws so three fantastic ways to hold this in place while you're using it this is the saw that is provided with the miter box and i just want to note this is a stanley miter box and this is a push cut saw so the cutting action is going to occur when you're pushing the saw. That's important to keep in mind because you always want your workpiece away from you in the miter box so that it's supporting the back side of it and you're not experiencing any tear out with the saw. Let's get a piece of trim in here and do a little cutting. For this part of this video, I am just going to opt to clamp my miter box into place right here on my workstation and secure it that way so there we go while I'm setting this up in here I just want to add that this miter box is capable of cutting zero a 22 and a half a 45 and also right here on this end it is capable of cutting a 45 degree bevel cut so for this video, we are going to cut a 45 degree inside corner. So these, these are eccentrics or cam locks basically. So in one way, you'll want to pick the hole that is closest to the material. And as you can see, this is offset. So we're going to set it in here like this, and then we're going to twist it, making sure that the bottom of the trim is flat to the miter box bottom. Then we're gonna come down here in the same hole and we're gonna do the same thing and lock that in. Now we are ready to cut this first 45. So what I wanna do is because this trim is really close to the top. So I wanna just pull the saw, even though you push it to cut, I want to pull it and, and it will make a little cut in there it's just not going to be aggressive and it's going to get us started now we'll start cutting real slow nice easy pushes 
Now we're adequately in the slots, we can cut away. And there we have it. We have our first cut complete. It's a nice clean cut. A little bit of tear out on the back, but nothing to be concerned with. Let's cut our next piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this off at a zero. may see we lost a little bit of the side of the miter box that is going to happen these do not last forever now to get the other side of this we need to come to the other side of the trim and cut it this direction same thing I want to do some pulls And there we have it, one inside corner. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and we will make an outside corner. I'm going to put a little tape on the back of these just to act as a hinge. I'm going to put them together so that we can get a better look at our results. Now I just want to note that the miter box is not perfect. So you wouldn't be cutting and installing a hardwood type trim with this miter box. This would be for a painted trim. So here we can see a little bit better the miter that we're dealing with. And you can tell that it's a little bit loose right here at the top, but it would be a very minimal amount of caulk to make this look very nice. I've seen jobs worse than this with a miter saw, so Nothing to be concerned with here. A little caulk and that is fixed up and looking good. Let's do an outside corner. For the outside corner, I'm just going to use one cam lock and I'm going to pull it back in just a little bit. Same thing here, now we're just going to cut it off at zero. Now we're going to do the same thing here.
and there we have it once again it's a decent cut it's acceptable a little bit of caulk and it would be a very fine looking piece of trim I also want to note and one of the biggest reasons I keep a miter box around is they are really good for cutting doweling even if you need very small pieces very easy to lock in and very easy to cut small pieces of doweling this is my preferred method of cutting doweling it's very well supported nice pretty decent clean cuts and ready to go before we move on to cutting that tall piece of wood I just want to point out that you can cut a 45 degree bevel right here in the end of the miter box and there we have it a little bit of elbow grease but we've also cut a very nice miter there is a little tear out right here that would need to be sanded and cleaned up but a nice miter cut now that we've cut an inside and an outside corner you have kind of see how the saw can bind and it can fight you a little bit there's something that we can do to assist with that and help stop that from happening and that is to per se lubricate this blade while it feels plenty smooth and it shouldn't really be binding but it does bind in the wood so you can use WD-40 you can use penetrating oils you can use um, like cooking spray um, all kinds of different things to help this blade from binding I am going to put a little bit of finishing paste wax on here and then we are going to cut another piece and we should eliminate some of that binding and it will actually help us get a better cut than what we got the first time around so I'm gonna get this on here I'm gonna let it sit for just a few minutes and then I'm gonna wipe it off I've got all the wax wiped off the blade and we're just gonna go ahead and cut another inside corner and, and just see if it cuts any different for us So you can see we had a little bit of binding when we started, but very little after that. One of the drawbacks to the miter box is the trim that you can cut in it. It's only three inches tall, so it restricts you to your basic baseboards and your basic case moldings. But there is a way around this, and I'm going to show you that right now. So I have a piece of five and a quarter inch material here and you know some trim profiles are six inches tall and that would literally be impossible to cut in the box because there's no way to get your saw started so i'm going to show you how we can cut this taller profile it takes an additional step but it can be done so we're going to start out with a one by eight that i have right here that is larger than your miter box or what I mean is by longer it's slightly wider but that's no big deal and what we want to do is actually take two or three of these and put them together since I'm using just scrap material that I had laying around I'm going to add some pieces some strips to this and we're going to do that with just a couple of screws to hold everything together so this is going to be the back side the front side is going to have to be 
a little precise and I'm just going to stack two of these on here and we're going to call this the back side or the non-functioning side this is going to be the front side and for the front side it's very important that we we line everything up nicely so that all the boards across the face are nice and flush as we put it together now as you can tell I've already pre-assembled this and just kind of popped it apart now I'm just popping it back together so what we wind up with it's a jig I guess you could call it but it's it's a platform is what it is it's just a platform to raise the miter box up I've marked my flat face so that I know what I want the board to be up against. All these are flush, they're very nice, they're square. So we're going to bring our miter box back on top and we're just going to flush it up with this very outside edge right here. Now we'll go ahead and take our clamps and lock it in place. Now, whatever size material that you're cutting, you want to make sure that you build your platform to that height. And what I mean by that is, we're not going to put the material in the miter box. We're going to put it outside of the miter box, just like this. And we are going to cut it as far down as the miter box will let us cut it down. Once we get there, we want to bring it into the miter box and finish cutting it. So, you want to make sure that your platform is one, high enough, and two, that once you make this first cut and you get down that three inches that this miter box will allow you to go, we're, we're not going to have three inches because of this. And then when you bring it in though, that you can finish it. So if it was a six inch piece of material, you would probably want to put another piece on here, another three quarter inch piece, so that it would be right here at the top when you start cutting then when you bring it in you can still get in your grooves and finish it the other thing i want to add is we will no longer be able to use this saw because this saw has this ridge across the top and it just won't let you go any further than about halfway through this material before that ridge hits so we have to use a different saw the saw that I'll be using is a 8 teeth per inch cobalt. It's a low friction blade. And I'll be making the entire cut with it, not bringing this saw back into play at all. Because there could be a slight difference in width that would cause issues with the cut. So we're going to set this right outside the box. Now we're just going to take a regular bar clamp and clamp it into place. So it's important that your work surface is, it doesn't have to be level, it has to be flat. Because wherever this is sitting and this is sitting, you want to make sure that you emulate the bottom of this box so it doesn't need to be level but it needs to be flat or the same all the way across now that we've got this clamp in here we're going to take the cobalt saw and we're going to lay it in our guides just like this no no one says the miter box is just a guide so no one says that the wood has to be inside of it to cut it let's cut this off
Now that we're at the bottom of the miter box, we'll go ahead, we'll unclamp it and bring it back inside. We'll line it up. The cams are a little more difficult to use because the handle's kind of in the way of the taller board. They're not really designed for a taller board. You can lock it in there good because I can't move it to readjust it. With it back in the proper position, lined up with our slot, we're ready to finish our cut. And there we have it. So we have successfully used our miter box to cut a five and a quarter inch board on a nice 45 degree miter. So as you can see, holding the cut off into place, it's not a bad miter. It's not perfect. It's not the quality that you're gonna get with a miter saw but it's acceptable especially for trim work that's going to get caulked you wouldn't use this miter box in combination with a hardwood trim you're just not going to get that kind of quality some caulking and some cleanup is going to be required with that complete that's going to be a wrap so it is possible to cut material that is too tall for your miter box with your miter box just takes a little bit of extra time and moving the pieces around a little bit, it can be done. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider doing so. And remember to always respect the power of your power tools. We'll see you soon.